Welcome back to the bubble, ladies and gentlemen. We are playing some Cossacks 3 today, and I will be playing together with, um, with a computer, actually. Playing as Poland, and I will have Ukraine on my side. And together we will fight against Hungary and Russia. It's going to be a really interesting game. And uh, I actually got inspired by listening to Sabaton just the other day. They have a song called The Winged Hussars. When the winged hussars arrive. And that made me, uh, mo gave me the motivation to uh, play some Cossacks 3 as um, Poland. So I can get some winged hussars going. They're such a cool civilization. And of course, I'm gonna start with upgrading the um, grain crops treatment, so I will increase my harvesting. But that will mean that I can't produce any um, any peasants or soldiers so far, because that will give make me um, that will lead me to starvation. And uh, if my citizens start to starve, then they're gonna die. Actually, I don't. I'm not sure if it's the best strategy to go straight for uh, this 140% harvesting, or uh, if I should start building more peasants instead. But uh, this is the way I do it. And if you look to the right, so far, I mean, the lead point-wise, my um, ally named Very Hard, and my uh, Cossacks three Nick is Bonkinator. Really fascinating stuff. And together we're gonna fight off. Uh, Russia and Hungary is gonna be really interesting Ukraine is one of those really um, really strange civilizations in Cossacks because they can't upgrade to the uh, 18th century so they won't get the 18th century barracks etc they also don't get stone walls as far as much as I uh, as far as I recall and also they um, and also, they don't have any 17th century close combat units. But rather, they only have long distance units who are really deadly when they are uh, high level. But they also need to be protected. For them to be, uh, mm -hmm. for them to be effective. Because if, um, if we say that they have only the long distance shooters and I come with... Uh, and I come with some uh, really fast units like Sish Cossacks or Hussars or um, something like that, then um, they will be silenced pretty quickly. First of all, I'm gonna bet that um, our enemies are up to the left and to the right. The issue here is, however, that if they decide to uh, team together towards either me or Green, um, then they then we won't be able to core coordinate a defense efficiently. So that is of course a challenge, playing with um, a computer. If I were to play with another person, we could coordinate our defense and also our attacks. But if we look at Ukraine over here, already starting to get some gold going. Really really well done. I hope um, that they will be able to defend themselves with a set of dukes. I however really need to start getting some um, getting some mines going as well. So I'm gonna start building for that. If you look to the right I am very far behind right now in my points but that's most likely because my market isn't up yet. Now it very soon will be though. There we go. And now I got some points up as well. My first goal so far will be just to get up get the other town hall up. And then I will be able to start recruiting um, troops more efficiently. I'll also need I need like everything right now in the beginning I need more gold I need more food I need more wood and stone etc 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 so first of all we need to get a good production going of, uh, of peasants so I'm gonna have all my stone workers right here 
go straight into lumberjack mode because we need 2100 wood in order to build our second town hall so that will of course be the first priority and then we'll also need to fill up these mines etc Now in the beginning, it's pretty slow, because you don't really have resources to do anything. So we can take our time and look at our Polish 17th century pikemen. They are so cool. They have sabers and spears. They're probably some of the most well-dressed units in the game. And of course, it fits with the hats and clothes, because we play in a winter landscape right now. And very soon we'll be getting our next town hall going. Come on, we need 2,100, and we're there. And then when that one's up, we will start growing exponentially. Which will be, um, of course, really necessary for us to be useful at all to our ally and in this war. Then we need to really pull on, um, um, carry our weight, so to speak. So now we have seven, um, seven peasants uh, idle. So we'll set them on wood production and these guys will set on stone production. So that's good. Now we have one of our town halls constantly producing peasants to the food, to the wheat fields and we have one town hall constantly sending peasants to the stone. So um, we'll be on our way, we'll be on our way. Now our scout, our poor scout 17th pike, century pikeman died somewhere around here. So we know that they're on their way, they're on their way. We need to get our production going as well. We don't have, now we can build an academy. But we also need to increase our military production exponentially. We need 2,500 gold for that. And that means that we need to build some more mines. That's coal. I want gold. If I'm unfortunate, then most of my gold mines will be up in front. But I'll send some pikemen around. Oh, there we lost that pikeman. Unfortunately, yeah, there we got one One mine one gold mine right there double our income when it comes to gold Really important because I want that second 17th century barrack up and running And I want that like yesterday So we'll get that gold mine going. I would really like to see another iron mine somewhere around here. Doesn't seem like we're that fortunate right now though. So we're gonna make do with a stable. We are quite some um, resources away from getting our third town hall. So I guess we're gonna make do with the second one. We need more wood though to um, in order to build the academy, but also this next stable, etc. It's really important for us right now to get our military production going as soon as possible. Because I'm not counting on I'm not counting on Ukraine to carry all of their weight. But they are going, they are on the offensive. Like I said though, the Sergiuks like some close court and combat cavalry and these guys are done for really quickly but they um they do have some military capacity going that's really nice to see really happy for them 
point-wise, I'm in the lead though, I'm very happy for that. I think it's Russia being red, obviously, and orange being uh, Hungary. So I think it looks like Russia is uh, a bit behind, point-wise. Now we're able to make an upgrade on one of the mines. We're gonna go straight for the gold mines. I think it's 1,250 gold, yeah. For one of them. Otherwise, we are on our way right now. I do, however, really need to upgrade my troops right now. I'm completely gapped it that uh, if my troops aren't upgraded more then they're gonna be super squishy and I will be overrun in like the first attack basically basically having eight idle peasants I can send them on food so I can take them from there and look at that we have our Pospolite Ruchenie. Ruchenie. horsemen armed with a musket and we have a light writers light horsemen armed with a saber fast building speed low attack values and then we have the winged hussars very slow production speed high movement speed high attack and defense values heavy horsemen armed with a long lance I think we're actually gonna start with the writers because the slow very slow production speed kind of scared me and I want to wait for uh, this upgrade the, the decreasing the recruitment speed for cavalry before uh, before I uh, start messing with the winged SARS now we're gonna have another mine on level 2 And that's really good then the gold will start pouring in food seems to be my biggest issue right now and that is a really big issue for me as well especially since I haven't upgraded my troops at all almost and also we're really low on food so I need my Academy to be up and running as soon as possible So that I can take some of these peasants to go back and start uh, go back to their farming activities I'm gonna make these uh, the clips of this game like all of the Cossacks games um, I'll make those clips like half an hour long so they won't be too long for you to watch but you can take one uh, episode every now and again Upgrade to get some more food income, really important. And we do have some slow ass light riders. However, these will be really important for me when it comes to harassment. I will need my, uh, my cavalry in order to harass our opponent. Now we're running, ro running low on food again. Crazy how much food we're losing. I mean, the field capacity is not the issue here. Hmm, I don't know where our opponent went. If you look at that, this is what I talked about the Serdukes. They're really ineffective when it comes to fighting uh, close combat troops. So they need to spread out into smaller squads right here. If they don't aim for that guy... Yeah, then he just silenced this whole squadron because... Yeah, because they can fight in close combat. So, now we're starting to get some food going. Really important also important to keep the buildings coming so we can get into the 18th century we need the artillery depot for that and also I will really need to start 
pushing on my Russian opponent because I have Russia on my side and Ukraine has Hungary to face on their side. And so far my cavalry is pretty weak so I will use them mostly for harassment and it will be uh, much more interesting when I get the um, a production going of the winged hussars. Really, really interesting to watch. They're super fast and they're super strong as well. Got more writer production. I will do both light writers and also the Pospolite Ruschenie. Sorry if I butchered that one. Ruschenie. But hopefully they will be really useful when it comes to harassing the economy. Of our Russian adversary. We have them right there. And I think they're starting to run back now because they saw that our troops are starting to um, head for their village, basically. As soon as possible, I want this upgrade. But I need both gold and iron and coal for that one, so that's gonna be really costly. Really, really costly. I should, however, I will be selling some stone for wood so I can build my third town hall and also I will push out my second 17th century barracks right now. Super important to get your production going on um, on um, on the minerals or the metals so to speak. I'm not too worried about the dwellings because now I just got another town hall and very soon I'll have another barrack as well. I rely super heavily though on capturing peasants from uh, other civilizations because uh, that will basically give, give you double the production of everything because you can build from two civilizations. The cost for the buildings increase with every uh, with every new building you make. It um, it becomes more expensive with the next building. So that's why town halls and barracks and things like that are super uh, irritating in that sense. But now we just got our first. Russian peasant. So we are putting down two um, Russian town halls and then we are um, executing him. This is good. Now we just got a 10 population mine. That's really good as well. So I'm gonna say thank you for the small production that we got and then I'm gonna blow it. It's super important to keep the pressure on your opponent's economy. That's something I learned from uh, Age of Empires, basically, that you want to starve your opponent. Because if they're busy defending, they won't have time to attack you. And that's good for me, especially since my... Uh, my army is really weak right now. They're not upgraded at all. They're not upgraded at all. But now I will keep my pressure going. This might be really dumb actually. I'm gonna keep... Um, I'm gonna use my cavalry for pressure both on uh, Hungary and on Russia because it seems like my Ukrainian partner in crime is uh, having some real issues right now. They have their Serdukes, but I mean, this lone unit of pikemen completely messed it up. So, I will need to uh, help him out somehow.
I would really need more stone around here. There we go. Now we're getting a production going with um, with Russian peasants as well. Really important. But I really need to get over and protect them. I will start by pushing into um, Orange's base, hopefully giving them a bit of a reprieve. And I will send my winged hussars over there as well. Then I'll send my Rugenius over there. Come on! More Polish peasants are available. I need to find some stone. Because right now, I'm not finding any. I do have a lot of uh, Russian peasants though, that's good. And here we have the beautiful stone. Okay, it looked like they were actually able to, um, to push them back. That's great, that's really great. I want 5,300 iron, so I'm gonna sell a bunch of stone. There we go. Now we're gonna increase our production uh, speed of cavalry. All our cavalry. So it will be much easier to pop out the winged hussars now. Okay. Just got another one of those. And I will build a couple of uh, Russian 17th century barracks. Then we need to get our uh, population going, of uh, our Russian population going as soon as possible, because that will um, give us the ability to, of course, create 17th century and 18th century Russian uh, units, and also I will get much more population space from building all the Russian town halls and barracks, etc. Oh wow, sorry for the lag. Gonna build a mine right over there as well. And look at that. And we have a Hungarian peasant as well. Awesome, so now we have a Hungarian civilization up here as well. This will be so good for, our, for us population wise. I don't know from, I think I will create uh, soldiers from the 18th century from all of the um, populations that I have at my disposal. I however don't think that I will be creating a lot of 17th century troops from all of them. They will just take up population space basically. I do however think that it might be a good choice to have a bunch of um, to have a Russian army ready and uh, to relieve my Ukrainian friend. So I need to upgrade those troops and keep him defended. And I'll try to apply some pressure as well. I mean, this is not good in the sense that I've completely took um, relieved the pressure I had on my opponent because I tried to help um, my ally. But, you know, I do my best, of course. And I just need a bunch of food and gold. And then I will be able to create uh, or to um, evolve to the 18th century with my Polish civilization. Then I will, of course, uh, get an upgrade so I can see the whole map, this upgrade which will reveal the whole map and that will of course be very important for me in order to plan my defense and also my attacks and uh, my support of my teammate. I have so many idle Russians right now that I will put them on wood production. There we are in trouble. 
we lost our light writers. I mean, we're just giving um, more space to our Ukrainian ally, and they seem to be doing really well. They are on the offensive right now, while Russia is really not on the offensive. But look at that winged hussar. He killed two pikemen before going down. That's really impressive. But these guys, 120 pikemen, won't do, won't be uh, of much use to me if they're just standing there. I do have a lot of troops right now. I'll send all of my pikemen just to the front and all of my uh, musketeers as well. Just sending all of them to the front, really. Thirty thousand food. I can get that by selling some stone, and we are off to the 18th century with our Polish um, city, at least. And as soon as possible, I will start like um, start selling stone like crazy in order to upgrade my mines. That will be really important. And I will start making some Russian stables as well. And I also need to keep an eye on my Ukrainian population. Yep, it's not easy having several populations as one at once, I'll tell you that. So now we're setting um, both of the Hungarian town halls to produce uh, peasants automatically. And look at that, now we have our 18th century cavalry available. Uh, so I think I will... Hmm... No, I actually think I'll keep doing the, um, the unique Ukraine... Uh, the unique uh, Polish units, actually. I think they're really cool. Sending every cavalry to keep the pressure on uh, Russia. I mean, Ukraine is doing very well for itself, but if you look at the points, it's pretty clear uh, who's in the lead. However, Hungary is doing an amazing job as well. They are getting really strong compared to uh, compared to my ally. However, we will soon be washing over the Russian base right now. So far, we haven't. We have lost a couple of troops, of course, but. There haven't been too much, um, too much resistance. I have super cool Russian units as well. Heavy horsemen armed with a mace, or armed with some mace. Hmm. We are getting so many uh, idle peasants right now. But we need to get keep our production going, of course, and we need to get our Hungarian civilization up and running as well. So we're gonna uh, keep producing a bunch of buildings useful for that. Just all the buildings that we need in order to go up to the next uh, to the next level, because I will need to start. Um, I will need every um, production building I have when it comes to the 18th century. However, so far it seems to go okay between me and Russia. And of course, I will want this upgrade, but it costs an arm and a leg, unfortunately. So I will be selling a lot of stone to get the design Montgolfier to reveal the whole map. We are on our way to form a legit dent into uh, the Russian base, though. There we go. Our entire map is revealed. I must say, so far, I've done quite a good job, it feels like, when it comes to putting the pressure on my opponent 
as well as um, stick up for my Ukrainian ally. I hope you enjoyed this first part. Like, uh, like I said, I will try to keep it about half an hour per episode. So, if you, um, if you like the episode, please feel free to comment or to leave a thumbs up. If you have any tips or tricks for me to, to um, develop my gameplay of Cossacks 3, please feel free to give me some uh, feedback on that. Until then, until I see you the next time, I hope you have a great day and have a good one.